Lansdowne Road in Dublin is most famous for its stadium, but that's not what this video is about. Instead, I'm going to be taking a look at the station serving it, because that's just the kind of cool person I am. See, recently I found myself on holiday in Dublin, staying literally about five minutes down the road from the station, and what caught my eye was this Steam Age signal box. And that in turn got me wondering about the station's history. Turns out that this station actually sits on the oldest railway in Ireland. The line through here opened in 1834 and was known as the Dublin and Kingstown Railway. I did a video talking about this railway a long time ago, which I will not be linking because it's really old and I don't like it anymore. But basically, why this line is important is because it pioneered the concept of the commuter railway, which I'm going to define here as a line that runs into a city with the primary purpose of transporting regular passengers from outside the city. It was intended to connect the city centre of Dublin with the harbour at Kingstown. The railway opened on the 17th of December 1834 between Westland Row and Blackrock. The following month, a full service began. In 1837, the line was extended to Kingstown Harbour, or Dunlera as it's now known, if I'm pronouncing that right. But at that time, there was no station at Lansdowne Road. Actually, it would be more than 30 years before the station came along. In the meantime, the operation of the Dublin and Kingstown would be taken over by the Dublin and Wicklow Railway in 1856, which in 1860 was renamed to the Dublin, Wicklow and Wexford Railway, and it was the DWWR who finally gave Lansdowne Road its station. The station opened on the 1st of July 1870 as Lansdowne Road and Bulls Bridge. The main station building and the signal box I mentioned earlier both date from this time, Two years later, the name was changed to just Lansdowne Road. Also in 1872 came the thing that really put Lansdowne Road on the map. That year, a gentleman named Henry Dunlop founded Lansdowne Football Club. Dunlop was an engineer and civil servant, but his greatest passion seems to have been sports. Pretty much any sport, apparently. In 1871, he founded the Irish Champion Athletic Club at Trinity College, and was basically instantly shut down by the provost. Looking for a new venue, he spotted some land alongside the railway owned by the Pembroke Estate. He took out a lease on this and got to work on his new sports ground. Being an engineer, he led the construction, setting out pitches for tennis, archery and cricket. And finally, one for rugby. The pitch was built out of soil excavated by the railway, designed to be a truly world-class ground for rugby and football. And so it was. The venue grew both physically and in importance, becoming world famous. It would become Ireland's national stadium, the home of both the Ireland National Rugby Union team and the Republic of Ireland national football team. The railway passed beneath the West Stand. The railway was key to the success of the ground. It provided easy access to the centre of Dublin and the wider rail network. On match days, special services would be operated. This small station would find itself added to the timetable for express trains. However, while taking the train may have been fast and convenient, it wasn't necessarily comfortable. The rolling stock employed was often old and not designed for crowds. In 1893, a siding was added for the Royal Dublin Society's showground, which enabled trains of livestock to be brought in, possibly in more luxurious conditions than the rugby fans, he said satirically. Despite several generations of rolling stock, the service through Lansdowne Road remained notoriously uncomfortable and unreliable. In fact, by the late 1970s, it was clear that urgent action was needed. And so, Dublin Area Rapid Transit, or DART, was devised. This would be Ireland's first electrified mainline railway and would totally change the character of the line. Platforms would be lengthened and new stations would be added. You could say it was a 20th century metro built on a 19th century metro. The upgrade was completed in 1984. And finally, the line was capable of handling match day crowds. The level crossing can be controlled from the signal box and there are extra entrances that are normally closed off. In 2007, the stadium was demolished, replaced in 2010 by the Aviva Stadium. 
It's still the home of Irish rugby and football, though, and it's still next to the station, even if the railway doesn't run directly under the stands anymore. These days, Lansdowne Road is, in a quiet way, an interesting station. Most of the time, it's a small commuter stop, which has some nice historic buildings. Yet on match days, it can be transformed into a high-capacity station, ready to take on the world. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please do leave a like and consider subscribing for more. I'm planning to revisit Irish lines in future videos because I just really like them. Let me know if there are any I should really be looking into in the comments section down below. I would like as ever to thank my donors on Ko-fi and Patreon and here on YouTube for your generous donations. You are the new commuter line to my old commuter line. And I will see you all again very soon. Cheerio.